Do your game graphics make you want to cry? Does your user interface look like it was designed by a toddler? If you answered yes to these two questions, your game may be suffering from a deadly disease known as Ugly Duckling Syndrome. In all seriousness, folks, for far too long, this project has suffered from subpar graphics and a UI straight out of the 90s. I thought it was time to invest a little time, money, and effort to make this game slightly less embarrassing. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how I took this ugly duckling and transformed it into this beautiful swan. The first order of business was searching for some decent looking 3D models for my city. I had two requirements. My budget was $50 considering this is a hobby project for fun, and the models needed to be in a low poly style. I've always liked the low poly look, and it also means the models will be simpler and cheaper. I started by looking at Fiverr, the land of milk and honey when it comes to cheap labor. There were a lot of impressive modelers, especially these models by Hamad Kazi. Unfortunately, all of the models that were actually decent cost at least $15 a piece. I thought I might have more luck looking for a curated collection on the Unity Asset Store. While we aren't building our game in Unity, a 3D model is a 3D model, and the licensing for assets purchased from their store do not limit you to Unity. Quickly, I found this amazing set of models by Polyperfect. I couldn't believe they were only charging $40 for this entire bundle, considering it contained over 100 building assets, not to mention vehicles, terrain, people, nature, props, the list goes on. I purchased the pack and started the simple process of integrating them into my game. I first had to convert the models from FBX format to GLB format since I was having issues with the models loading properly. I found this handy command line tool that converts FBX files to the GLTF format. If you're interested in learning how to import GLTF models into your scene, I've created a video on that, which I've added in the description below. Finally, I created a model definition object that defines the metadata for each of my 3D models. I could assign a name, specify the file location, and also specify custom scaling for each model. The previous work I had done in my asset manager class made adding these models to the scene a breeze. Given I had so many building objects to work with, I decided to add an extra little spice to the mix. Similar to before, buildings could level up. But this time, I swapped out different assets based on the building level. For example, a level 1 residential zone could be a small house, while level 2 would be a 4 to 5 story apartment building, and a level 3 would be a towering skyscraper. Each level increase would expand the maximum number of residents that could live in the building. The same treatment was also applied to commercial buildings. Level 1 could be a burger shop, cafe, or restaurant. Level 2 would be a casino, data center, or a theater, while level 3 would be towering skyscrapers. Unfortunately, the building pack I purchased did not include as many industrial buildings, so I did not implement the leveling system for those. With the building set up, the next challenge was getting roads to render properly. There were five different road tiles that needed to be displayed, depending on which neighboring tiles were also roads. This really came down to building a giant matrix to determine which road tile to render when, and also making sure the tiles were rotated correctly. These road tiles alone made a huge difference in the appearance of the city, and I'm really happy with the look of them. The UI also needed a major refresh. I found this example game UI by Tahoran that had some elements I liked. Overall, it took me about two hours and lots of experimentation and tweaking to get the UI to a state that I liked. Now, I'm not going to walk through every change I made to the UI, so I thought I would just make a quick time lapse so you could see a change over time. Enjoy!
Well, folks, that's all for this one. I will continually make some small UI improvements over time, but this will be the last major graphics update for this game. I had a few requests in the last video about adding traffic and pedestrians to the city, and I agree that the city is definitely lacking some life and it seems like a fun challenge, so I'll be tackling that in the next video. Until next time, keep on coding, chilling, and creating, my friends.